Welcome back. Well, the manufacturer's confidence in Nigeria's uh, economy dropped to the lowest level in nearly two years. In the second quarter uh, of this year, the Aggregate Manufacturer's CEO Confidence uh, Index, that's the MCCI of the Manufacturers Association of Nigeria, declined for the third straight quarter to 52.7 points uh, in the second quarter from 54.1 points in the uh, previous quarter. Also, Data from Stambic IBTC PMI that shows activity, business activity fell to 50.2 points in August. Well, uh, joining me now for analysis is Mr. Ayodeji Ebo, MD uh, Optimus by Afri Invest. Great to have you on the show, Mr. Ayodeji. Yeah, good morning, and uh, thanks for having me. Fantastic. Thank you for starting your morning with us here on Business Morning. But we see there uh, both indicators are signaling. You know, business activity is slowing, but still above the 50-point level. Um, from all indications, we see uh, business uh, was quite tough in um, August. How you seeing it? Okay, thanks. Uh, so it's the reality. So if we look at the several factors that have continued to weigh down on businesses, uh, you look at from the FX. So for those that were even accessing FX at the official window, we saw a 40% depreciation in that space. You look at also the parallel market have moved by almost 20% and liquidity is not there. So there's a lot of certainty within that space. You also want to look at fuel prices that fit into transportation cost of production. That continues to also weigh. And as cost rise, it will also impact on the demand. We can see inflation rate at 24% as at um, July, means that a lot of purchasing power will be impacted, which would reduce the ability for Nigerians to demand for things. So it's really a, a worrying time and concerning time for businesses. It's really tough times because things are, in terms of cost of production, continue to rise. And that will be impacting on bottom line. Uh, you, and a lot of companies feed more on, when you look at um, loans to run their business. So you have the cost of finance running and cost operational co uh, cost also increasing. And if you have FX input in terms of ha having to have, uh, you import items, the cost has increased and a lot of volatility within the investment space. So I, I believe that both the uh, manufacturers uh, index as well as the Stambic uh, PMI index is capturing the reality that is currently on ground. Yes, yeah, so I guess it's a, it's a tough time for, you know, consumers as well, producers, manufacturers, you know, at, at this time. But um, what do you see? Um, we're in September now. Do you see the, the, the same uh, downturn? Do, we, do you see us going below that 50-point level looking at these um, indicators in the month of September? Okay, thanks. Uh, I don't think it would go below the 50-point level, but it may go lower uh, or remain around the August level. When you look at the factors that determine the level where uh, the indices in August. We also, we've also seen that in this month, with the, the volatility, the FX supply has not improved. And we don't know at what level we, will be the release set to for the month of September. Uh, fuel prices, which has direct impact on transportation costs and also business generation, uh, business costs. We don't know if, if uh, depending on where food oil prices and FX also uh, level at, if government would also be increasing the uh, the oil price, because it's also uh, based on the last uh, statement. If it's also not increased and most of the factors or the actual cost have also increased, it means the money is also the funding is coming from somewhere. So at the end of the day, it's zero sum game. So um, it's really tough to, we feel that September is still going to be very tough um, given the current position. The demand for goods and services continue to wind down because income is not increasing 
as much as cost is increasing. As a result, what people have to demand for, they are also reducing that, which would also feed into the production. So if, um, as an individual, uh, the demand used to be like maybe 1,000 based on quantity of a particular item, and now it's at 800, it means I may not need the, the number of um, workers that I need to produce it. I may have to cut down if that demand is not going up. And you can see the ripple effect and they are dependent, and that is how it affects activity within the economy. So right. I don't think um, the uh, we are out of the woods, or there's something that will take us out of the woods for this month of um, September. Right. And talking about being out of the woods at this point, I, I checked on the oil markets, and I see oil prices still, you know, tending up at this time, eighty-eight dollars and uh, up about three cents this morning. And definitely we know how that translates into higher prices, you know, at the pumps. And definitely that gives me a lot of fear, you know, right now seeing those prices up. But we see current employment condition uh, as the rate of employment uh, declined to 50.2 points from the 50.7 points recorded in the first quarter, but still remains marginally up at the 50-point benchmark. Then we have that debate about you know, the MBS uh, adherence to ILO standards with the inauguration of the new Nigeria Labor Force Survey, which, you know, drove uh, unemployment down to about 4.1 percent in Q1 from 33.3 uh, percent. So th this begs the question, is Nigeria's unemployment rate, in your opinion, is it low or high? So if we look at uh, you know, uh, that's based on, on data, and I've not carried out any study, but based on the current situation, what leads to unemployment? Are businesses expanding? Are they taking more people? Businesses are shutting down. So if businesses are shutting down, it means that the rate of unemployment would, in, would increase. As uh, small businesses are finding it uh, challenging to expand, it means that capacity to absorb people into uh, employment or get them engaged is reducing even the artisans so if before you used to have like two helps um, to support you you may have to cut them down because the costs you have to increase their cost cost of transportation have increased so all those things would have its impact so i um i want to go into the methodology that's been used but the reality is that the ability to absorb to create employment is not there now which means that unemployment is increasing and businesses are not expanding. Demand for those goods are not there. So there's a lot that needs to be done to be able to increase the capacity to absorb people into the system. I know the government has a lot of plan uh, within the agri sector to see how they want to be able to create employment. So it's until all these things begin to translate into employment that we can see that people are beginning to get more engaged. Um, and that you will see the impact. When more people get more engaged, you will see that impact in productivity, you see that impact in insecurity. And just if we also look at the poverty level, you will see that it's also, it will also moderate. All right, Mr. Ebo, but, but talk to me now, you know, what, what are the potential, you know, consequences of, you know, manufacturers declining confidence in the Nigerian economy for the country's, you know, overall economic health? Okay, thanks. Uh, you, you know, we are all looking at seeing maybe foreign direct investment, or uh, people coming to, uh, investors coming to set up in the country. If the confidence is not there, it means for new investors, they will be more cautious and as a result, we will not be expanding. There won't be more jobs uh, because they would look at what those are currently operating. Are they doing well? Are they able to expand? Yes, there may be the opportunity, but you also, that's based on demand for the goods or the gap. But when you look at the costs of producing it, will you be able to, will there be demand for those goods or will you be able to survive as a company? Uh, we saw when you look at the uh, Nigerian exchange uh, for most of the manufacturing companies, the way the FX devaluation impacted significantly on their books. Yes, we may say, okay, that's based on financial making FX exchange losses. But in actual fact, for those that had access to the INA window to maybe 20 or 30% of their total FX requirements, 
Now, the rate has been, they, they need more Naira, increase it by 40%, more Naira to be able to either import, look at the telecom sector, um, if, if it's setting up um, buying gens or looking at the equipment that they use, most of them are in dollars and it fits into uh, the cost, total cost at the end of the day. All right. So uh, looking at um, uh, steps now, if any, that what do you think the government can do right now to boost, you know, manufacturers' confidence in the economy? Okay, th thanks. One, we need the right roadmap. Let there be clarity about what government wants to, to do uh, for manufacture. We know Nigeria is informal based and is also domiciled uh, mostly SMEs. And so we need a roadmap of how we want to take them out of the woods. How can we also provide support in terms of cheaper source of funding? Yes, we know in the past, most of the intervention funds might not have yielded the expected results, but that doesn't mean it is in, uh, in up some other clients, if you put the right control in place, it can create the right support for them if they're able to get loans at a cheaper rate. And security is also very key. If there's stability, there's a need. Once there's stability there's, uh, in the economy, most people also want to set up, uh, set up uh, factories. And lastly, our export base has to be diversified from oil. There needs to be deliberate efforts. Look at those items that we are strong at, provide funding and remove all the bottlenecks of exporting uh, within outside to outside the country so that we can begin to generate effects. And uh, once we are able to get that, there will be stability uh, in our Naira because that's also feed into everything because we are import dependent as a country. All right, uh, Mr. Ebo, so, so much uh, to do at this point. We need a lot of dollars uh, back into the Nigerian economy at this time to get some strength into uh, the Naira. Thank you so much, uh, Mr. Odeji Ebo, MD Optimus by Afrinvest. Thank you so much for coming uh, today. Always my pleasure. Thanks for having me.